rather than a chessboard. Uh -huh. So um, the content part also was very important. Of course, the approach, the treatment is experimental, mm -hmm. but uh, the content was very predominant to my mind as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, since the message was oriented towards the the audience all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that is why the technique was followed for that purpose, mm -hmm. which I thought that this will get across with the Western audience also. Mm -hmm. And that is why the whole technique is a And it, it uh, won a prize in a... It, was, it won a national award, mm -hmm. it was the best experimental film of the year. Then it has won some international awards also, some festivals abroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, many filmmakers from abroad who have been coming here, they have been seeing and they have been talking about it. Uh, this, uh, in one word, if I don't know what message could you get out of the film, I would like to hear that also. Your ex what message did you get? Well, I think there were many messages on many different levels. It was obviously about childhood and a child's vision of the world and but I think it was also about um, um, the, the cultural environment around that child and uh, what struck me was not only the content but the very personal and poetic approach to the content and I think it's very encouraging that a government supported films division can uh, support a more personal kind of uh, filmmaking, mm -hmm. despite the fact that uh, the audience, uh, I'm not sure, was this film shown in, in the theaters, in, yeah. the, in the films yeah. division? Yes, uh, the slot? Because I know that the films division is also supporting films that are shown in alternative circuits, for example. That's right. Cine, cine clubs. And cine clubs, the mobile units mm -hmm. in the rural areas, mm -hmm. on the TV network, mm -hmm. and film society groups. Mm -hmm. so. And even filmmakers like Manny Cole, who's, mm -hmm. whose audience is very specialized, and yeah. uh, gets regular projects from the films division. That's also part of the, the uh, mandate of the films division, too. Yes. Actually, uh, perhaps I told you that almost nearly 40% of our production, mm -hmm. we try to give to the independent filmmakers, mm -hmm. like Manikar. Mm -hmm. the, the purpose is that we encourage independent filmmakers, a kind of a documentary film movement in the country, mm -hmm. to be supported by us. And then it provides a kind of a healthy competition between the independent filmmakers and the filmmakers on our payroll. Keeps them on their toes. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that also is really, I think, I have found that uh, it really works. It mm -hmm. makes people, mm -hmm. you know, really be all the time on the toes mm -hmm. and thinking of something creative and not getting, mm -hmm. you know, into the routine of a generally said that the government Mm -hmm. working. So that is the thing which has been responsible to maintain the creativity among the filmmakers within the organization. And you were explaining to me the other day that a, a film advisory board uh, has some role in choosing of these independent projects, is that right? No. Film Sorry. advisory board actually comes in the picture for approving the films for compulsory release in the cinema theatres. Sure. You know, when we are actually compelling the cinema theatres to show our films, mm -hmm. morally we are committed to give them something really attractive mm -hmm. and something really interesting. Mm -hmm. So the role of the Film Advisory Board is this. They have to make sure that the films which are really going to the cinema theatres in compulsory exhibition, for a compulsory exhibition, are really worthwhile. Mm -hmm. They're not any, I mean, and unimportant so or 
Yeah, I'm an amateurish work or something like that. And so they choose both the independent works and the and staff. The, the staff. Mm -hmm. And um, the the slot is a standard 20 minute. 20 minutes. Format. That's the maximum limit. It can be less. It can we be less. can release films of even three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, but the maximum length which has been allotted to us is 20 minutes. And um, normally there's one release each week. For the one project. release each week at the moment. Earlier we were releasing nearly three films every week really? in 15 languages. Mm -hmm. Two documentaries and one newsreel. Mm -hmm. Now actually we are releasing one documentary and one newsreel, news magazine now, mm -hmm. alternately. I see. Mm -hmm. Each week. Each week. And a documentary also has the 20 minute slot? Yeah, 20 minute slot. I see. And. Um, so that means there are 104 releases, no, 52 releases each year. That's right. And the larger films, the longer films, how often are they released? The longer films, actually, they have a different circuit altogether. Mm -hmm. They don't go in the cinema theaters, mm -hmm. because there is the limitation of 20 minutes duration. Mm -hmm. They go to the television network. Mm -hmm. Then they go to the rural areas through the departmental, there's Department of Field Publicity mobile units. Mm -hmm. Then they go to the state government mobile units. Mm -hmm. Then to the educational institutions, to film society groups, and such, all other avenues. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we are having, we are thinking of going into the video parlors also, mm -hmm. which are coming up in a big way. Mm -hmm. in the country. On a rental basis? On a rental. The same procedure as the cinema theatres. Mm -hmm. They will be also compulsory exhibition in the mm -hmm. video palace. Uh, how would that work? You mean uh, you would require a video parlour to stock a certain number of films division? Mm -hmm. No, actually the way we are actually releasing our films, yes. we release 882 prints yes of each film every week in 15 languages. We have our distribution network all over the country. Mm -hmm. We have a branch distribution office, but for every 1500 cinema theaters, we have got one branch office. Mm -hmm. So like that, at the moment, we have got 10 branch offices for distribution spread all over the country. Mm -hmm. Now, these branch offices we are going to make use of for distribution of video cassettes also. That is our plan. Oh, I see. But then, since the number of video parlors is going to be tremendously, you know, high, because as against the number of cinema theaters today, we have about 12,700 and about 34 cinema theaters in the mm -hmm. country. Now, video parlors as on today, I am told, it is an unofficial figure, but I am told that it is about one million video parlors already there. Mm -hmm. So with this kind of a distribution setup, we cannot, you know, cover all those. So there we are going, we are thinking of making use of the state government, you know, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because the state governments, they have their directorate of information and they have got district information officers posted in each district. Mm -hmm. Then further down, there are block development officers. So if we try to go through them, and they are the government institutions, the state government institution, and they are in the direct control, the official control of, you know, administrative control of these cinema theatres. Because the administrative co control of cinema theatres and the video parlour is under the state governments, mm -hmm. it's not with the central government. Yeah. So they will be in a much, much better position to reach to all the video parlors. Mm -hmm. Now what we plan that we can send the number of video parlors required according to the number of video parlors, you know, mm -hmm. in that region. We can send the number of video cassettes to the district information officer who can distribute to the first run video parlors Mm -hmm. And then the video parlors in turn can go on sending the cases to the second run. It's a circuit, you know, the, all the number of video parlors have got to be distributed in two or three circuits. Mm -hmm. The first run 
uh, theatres, the second run theatre and this. So like that actually we are planning. So on the part reason. of the consumer it would be a voluntary kind of uh, relationship rather, that's, rather that's than right, That's right. That is there. Because um, we have been trying to impress upon the cinema theatres mm -hmm. that they, while being a member of the society, they also have certain responsibility to their society, mm -hmm. especially the society where they are physically, you know, situated. They would certainly like that their neighbors should be better informed, mm -hmm. better cultured, better, I mean, educated to behave properly, you know, mm -hmm. and be a more constructive member of the society. Mm -hmm. So there we have been saying that this is also, you have the infrastructure already available. So we are investing, the government is investing nearly 15 lakhs, you mm -hmm. know, uh, every week mm -hmm. on the production and distribution of films. Mm. So we said that you, because this is going to educate, this is going to improve the, your own neighbors, they are going to be better citizens of the country. Mm -hmm. So in the interest of your own society, I think this much you should come forward to mm -hmm. show these films. And traditionally your relationship with state governments has been uh, good? Very good. I mean, I can imagine that, say, in a state with an opposition party in control, that there might be tension or... No. There also, as for the social society is concerned, I think there is just no, no difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. If suppose there are social evils in the society, mm -hmm. like the development of the whole society, mm -hmm. like uh, certain superstitions, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, casteism, mm -hmm. you know, untouchability, mm -hmm. on these which have been coming over the ages. Obviously, even the state governments will be interested to get rid of all these things. Mm -hmm. So, um, there I don't think there is any, because they are not political matters, they are, the difference is on political matters. Mm -hmm. But here, as for the people are concerned, mm -hmm. their betterment is concerned, their life is concerned, their hygienic conditions are concerned. Mm -hmm. If they are to be educated about better hygienic conditions around them, mm -hmm. they are to be about health. You know, we have to talk about how to take care of your eyes or how to take care of your teeth or um, uh, for, um, cleanliness and all these things, family welfare, of, you know. All these things. I don't think there is any difference of opinion at all. And I, my experience is that all these state governments, mm -hmm. even in the opposition parties where the opposition parties are there in power, mm -hmm. they have uh, mm, never objected to our showing the films. Recently, mm -hmm. actually, I was in Karnataka, and I talked to them about the feature film that we are making now, mm -hmm. where we are making in their language with the people of their region in the film, mm -hmm. with their own cultural background, and taking some storyline so that the people of that place, they identify themselves better on the screen mm -hmm. and find solution to their own problems. So you're moving in the direction of having more regional um, roots? That's right, that's right. And uh, they, they were very gladly they accepted and they came out with all cooperation to mm -hmm. to help us. Well, that's interesting mm -hmm. because I think one of the criticisms I've heard in the past was that there was a certain kind of centralization mm. uh, uh, implicit in the structure mm. of the films division. Mm. Uh, um, so that's interesting to hear. Mm. Um, what about television? Now that's the other big thing that's happening now, isn't it? What is the challenge that you are facing in terms of television? Well, I would say that uh, the relevance of films division is now much more than what it used to be earlier. Mm -hmm. 
बिकॉज सो फॉर वी हैड ओनली दिनेमा थिएटर ऑडियंस एंड द मोबाइल यूनिट्स यू नो वी आर रीचिंग टू द रूरल ऑडियंस दैट वॉज द ऑडियंस एट आवर डिस्पोजल बट टूडे वी हैव द टेलीविजन ऑडियंस ऑल्सो आर एट आवर डिस्पोजल बिकॉज टेक्नोलॉजिकली एज यू विल एग्री विद मी दैट इट इज पॉसिबल to release our films on television with i think a much better quality than the video mm -hmm. can produce mm -hmm. but the other way around is not possible mm -hmm. i mean a video program cannot be released in a cinema theater correct but our programs can be released on the television with a much better quality mm -hmm. so i would say that the television has opened up new i mean i think exhibition channel for us is there a regular program on doordarshan that shows film division films yes uh, almost on the regular lines but we are trying to have a program where it is almost regular that every week the film division film should come like that and we are actually working out a program like that at the moment uh, film division is making nearly about 50 to 60 programs exclusively for tv mm -hmm. at their cost and they are actually mm -hmm. they have assigned that job to films to be mm -hmm. so for example on the science serial now we are better equipped as for the animation department is concerned mm -hmm. we have our cartoon film unit which uh, is considered as one of the best i mean quality anywhere as compared to anywhere in the world mm -hmm. now we have the puppet animation we have cell animation and um, cut out animation and all kinds of animation we are undertaking there and um, so we are in a much better position to produce certain programs which they are not yet in a position to do so that so they're taking advantage of all that's, your that's right technical that's resources right. and then any program which has an archival value mhm now that program actually as you will agree should be produced on film only mhm that is what the doordarshan also mhm they are now realizing this fact and wherever there is a program which requires to be preserved for all time to come then they prefer to produce on film and that we are doing it okay good okay um looking at all of these films i'm wondering about a historical perspective of the films division what would you say that over the last well, it's almost 40 years mm -hmm. have been the major strengths and achievements of the film divisions and which would you say would be the would be the shortcomings or the weaknesses of the films division that's a big question i know but yeah well as regards production of films mm -hmm. over the years we have been producing some very outstanding films mm -hmm. if awards are the any yardstick for the quality of films films division has won nearly about 1300 to 1400 national awards and international awards some of the films have even got oscar nominations mm -hmm. so as for the quality of films are concerned we have made a number of outstanding films now obviously films division such a huge organization producing almost 200 200 film 50 films every year you cannot expect all the films to be of the top mm -hmm. quality but obviously every year the major share which has been as for the awards are concerned the films division has always been bagging that mm -hmm. but where we have failed actually and why this recognition has not been there of the films division achievements mm -hmm. is that we have never made the right kind of an effort in promoting our films mm -hmm. so far mm 
Abroad, you mean, or abroad, or even in India? Mm -hmm. Because I will give you one example, which was really very, very shocking to me. The other day, the Bombay University organized a seminar. And they wanted me to speak in that seminar on the role of documentary films in classroom education. Mm -hmm. I invited, and the, all the professors from all over Maharashtra, they were invited, they were members, and they were attending, professors, teachers, and all that. I invited them to Films Division. I said that if you come to Films Division, we will talk. I can show you exactly what I'm talking. I can take you around to different sections, animation or puppet animation or photo micrography or microphotography or timeless photography and all these things we can show and then examples also I can show you. Mm -hmm. Then you will be able to really understand ki how powerful this media is for the classroom education. They all came here. They spent the whole day mm -hmm. and will you believe after seeing the films, they, uh, we talked to them about two hours and then they go, went around the films division. Then they saw a cross section of films on history, geography, science, mathematics, humanities, and all kinds of films. And then will you believe that they, the professors who are supposed to be educated people, and in Bombay, which is the most advanced city of this country, mm -hmm. They said, Mr. Chandra, we didn't know that such wealth of material is available with you. Now that kind of an ignorance, mm -hmm. it was a shock to me. That Films Division has been in existence for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And these people who are the educated class of the society, they are so much ignorant about the material that we have. Where have you failed? So that is what actually I am trying mm -hmm. to... Because in the, as a matter of routine, we were just releasing our films in the cinema theatres mm -hmm. and through the Department of Field Publicity for the rural audience. Mm -hmm. But educational institutions who are, I'm um, today, 50% of the Indian population is below the age of about 18 years, mm -hmm. which is tomorrow's India. Mm -hmm. And they actually, we have to reach them. How can we reach them? We have never made that effort in that direction. How does a teacher, for example, get uh, access to a, a film, say, on some subject uh, for, for use in his or her classroom? Well, I mean, uh, all our branch offices yes. in the country, they, in addition to the distribution of 35 millimeter prints in the cinema theater, mm -hmm. they maintain a library of 16 millimeter films also. I see. And they maintain a projector also. I see. So all these films are available to the educational institutions or any social group in their region. Free? Free. Free. And um, so, but perhaps the amount of literature, because it is available all right. Mm -hmm. But unless people regularly they are reminded, some kind mm -hmm. of a circular goes to them every year or every six months, ki these are the latest addition to our library or something like that. Mm -hmm. People actually don't remember. Mm -hmm. If you are just maintaining and sitting there, yeah. expecting that people will come to your library yeah. and see the film without any information being given to them, yeah. I think it was too much of an expectation from us. And there where we have failed, which I have taken on a very, very, I mean, uh, big scale and I am going, I have been collecting now mailing list of all the education institutions all over the country. And we are now uh, regularly going to inform them about what material is available, which is available, we can see. We are even trying to now create library, video libraries, of educational film material, mm -hmm. which is not available mm -hmm. anywhere in the country. So all these branch offices will have a library, a video library, and there will be a show window also, 
where the sale of video cassettes can be there. Mm -hmm. Then the library will be available to the members of the, the educational institution can become the member of the library. They can make use of that, loan facilities and all these things. Do most better. of the schools have uh, video equipment now? Many of them. Mm -hmm. Many of the educational institutions is at least uh, which are situated in the cities and the towns. Mm -hmm. They have gone in. And those who don't have video, they have the 16 millimeter projectors. Some have super 8 projectors. Mm -hmm. So we are in a position to supply prints of our films in all the formats. 16 millimeters, super 8 and video cassettes. Mm -hmm. That is what we are actually. So this is what is important is a good publicity campaign, mm -hmm. which was actually not done. And once we do that, I'm sure, you know, the importance of these films and the importance of the organization will be realized by everyone. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, political relationship of the Films Division to the government over the years? I know in Canada the National Film Board has often had, it's theoretically had to have an objective political stance and sometimes there's been tension between the National Film Board and the government. Uh, but I think, by and large, it's managed to maintain its independence. What about the, what is the situation here? I think it's almost the same. Uh, did you see our film um, face to face? Yes. Now, how do you react to that? It's, um, it was the film by Chari. Yes, That's right. Um, it's a kind of meditation on all of the problems that the country is facing. It, it has interviews with... That's right. With because they, that film, if you remember, uh, this is on the democracy in India. Yes. And if you see that we have tried to keep people, interviews, almost about 50-50 percent mm -hmm. are talking against and talking in favor. Mm -hmm. We have not tried to remove I the remember, people who are... I remember a couple of people were talking about dictatorship and how... In all kinds of things. Yeah. But we have allowed to be there in the film. Mm -hmm. Now, that means the only thing what we take here, you know, which a journalist, independent journalist, or sometimes I would not make a generalized statement, but some journalists who are interested in sensationalism. Mm -hmm. Sensationalism, to my mind, is only giving one side of the picture. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we try to present a balanced picture of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because there are, I mean, even according to the nature, there can't be only one side of a picture. Mm -hmm. There has got to be the two sides of the picture. Mm -hmm. So what we try in our films, we try to give a balance kind of a... But we don't try to ignore the negative aspect of the picture. Mm -hmm. We do try to bring out the negative aspect of it. Then, if you remember the film Burning Stone. I didn't see India that. 67. India 67. They called me Chamar. Mm -hmm. I mean, such very, very bold films. Mm -hmm. the, on the Bhagalpur blending, mm -hmm. many very powerful films which speak openly and frankly if anything has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think my Prime Minister actually is himself, he, he, he wants that if, there, if anybody is doing a wrong thing, why don't you talk about it? Mm -hmm. If we try to cover uh, that wrong thing, eh, we are going to damage the mm -hmm. organization, the institution. Mm -hmm. So these explicitly critical films, did they ever cause any kind of uh, they have. They have. controversy? Yes, they have. Sometimes agitations have also taken place. Sometimes the films which were actually some political people also mm, took an objection to it. Mm -hmm. The films were called to Delhi and it was seen by a galaxy of people from mm -hmm. the government in the politics and everywhere, seen repeatedly, discussed at length, 
and finally it's very encouraging to say that uh, they approve the film. Mm -hmm. So from time to time people have been, for example I had made a story on textile mm -hmm. strike and um, there was a big agitation, some party, political party, they came with flags and black flags and Mm. To the film division. Yes, to the film division I here. Story, yes. And some slogans and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, their leaders came here, they discussed. And uh, I told them, I told them, oh, uh, they said, Ki, you have only shown those, picture, uh, those people talking in the film, Any? who are talking in favor of this. Mm -hmm. uh, then I said, Ki, well, I am prepared to talk to anybody. You suggest me whom to talk, and we will keep in the film. Mm -hmm. Then they were taken by surprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to you, do you want me to come now? I'm ready to picturize now, and I want to include that in the film. Then they said, you, okay, we will take you on Saturday. Mm -hmm. They came on Saturday, I took me there. Oh, yeah. I went to that colony, and I said, should I talk to these people? They said, yes. I started talking to those people. Mm -hmm. And the moment I started talking, I definitely I probed into, you know, the affair, and they started coming out. I managed to get out the, the real information. Mm -hmm. Now the leader of this, the party who had come, he said, Nene, tum, what are you saying there? <laughs> Nene. Then I had to tell him, now, this is not possible. You cannot put your words in his mouth. I came to a place where you wanted me to come, mm -hmm. and now you have to allow him to talk freely. Mm -hmm. Then the fellow said, okay, okay, okay. Achha, then I said, Ki, when to do the shooting? Then they said, Ki, okay, we will co we'll come and we will again tell you. And thereafter they didn't come. Hmm. You get what I mean? So we had, they agitated. So there also we had given a very balanced picture. The agitators, mm -hmm. the people who were hurt in that textile strike, who, have who had suffered, mm -hmm. even the medic medical personnel, what they had to say, what kind of hurts, injuries they had suffered. Mm -hmm. And it was a very balanced picture, an open dialogue between the cross-section of the Mm -hmm. the, the people who were involved, and there, even the political people, and the ministers, even the political leaders of different uh, groups, even the unions, they all actually talked in that. Mm -hmm. But what my experience, you know, says, any amount of balanced kind of a story you may give, sometimes some kind of a critic is bound to come forward and some find some fault somewhere. Mm -hmm. You cannot satisfy everyone. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is, I don't think anybody can satisfy everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the artistic criticisms I've sometimes heard about films, division films, has to do with the, the voiceover. Mm -hmm. How this is this very rigid formula of voiceover narration in every film. This is a very interesting and question that you have asked me because this is a unique situation in this country. Mm -hmm. You know the problem that this country main languages are 15 languages in this country. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that the ideal situation would be that we make the film in the language, mm -hmm. the dialogue words, and the people talking their own heart, you know, that definitely has a different impact, different credibility. But our problem is if we start making, suppose a subject is there, mm -hmm. and we start making in that particular language, then for every film we will have to produce 15 versions. Mm -hmm. Now is it possible, physically possible? Now one film in one language, let us say basic version, Suppose Hindi or English, mm -hmm. we make. Now, if that film has to be made in all other 15 languages, 
that means suppose the the, uh, the expense on one film is about let us say um, uh, 100,000 then 100,000 multiplied by 15 mm -hmm. that will be the cost of production of one subject mm -hmm. now, is it possible to do that that has been a big handicap mm -hmm. which we have been facing mm -hmm. as a filmmaker myself actually I personally feel that this has been a big handicap in this country, but we can't help. Will you believe that these are the main languages, 15 languages, mm -hmm. every week we are releasing our films. If you talk of dialects, di there will be numerous dialects in this country. Mm -hmm. Now in this kind of a country, there's so much of, you know, if you go, if you, if you go in this country walk, after every 200 to 300 kilometers, the language changes, the customs changes, food habits change, dress, dresses change, everything changes. And this kind of a variety, the only solution was overlay, you know, that the commentary. Mm -hmm. That was the only compromise. So we are, and that, I'm not very happy with that kind of a compromise, but there is no other go. Mm -hmm. But wherever possible, you know, that is why when I mentioned to you that regional level, Mm -hmm. We have started making films and all this. Mm -hmm. That is one of the steps that we have taken and that is proving to be very successful. Mm -hmm. You know in the rural areas for example, now these overlays, they somehow, I mean they go over, o over the heads of the villagers. Mm -hmm. Because of the illiteracy, because of, you know, in the rural areas. Now 75% of the Indian population lives in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. So we thought that how to really involve them in the films because these commentary oriented film somehow was not achieving the result that we expected. And that is why we then went on to story based, you know, films where we involve the people of that region and they are talking in their own language and there we have found that now they are really involving the rural population, earlier they used to walk out mm -hmm. some of the documentary films. But now, when such films are coming, these are feature, it's about one hour long or one and a half hour, they are really glued mm -hmm. to the screen and they really identify themselves. Because it is their own language, in their own dialect, in their own, you know, background, their custom, their culture. So, they identify with every, you know, foot of the film. So this is what you would call a kind of motivational fiction? That's the, right, the that's right, that's right, that's right. And what's an example? Would there be one about family planning, see? Say? Family planning is there, then on dowry problems are there, some bonded labor problem or some emotional integration is there, national integration, family, all, all different subjects we have tried. We have already made nearly about 48 features. Really? And, uh, they are proving to be very, very effective with the rural audience. On a budgetary level, they must be much more costly than the documentary. Uh, mm, not so much. That mm -hmm. is surprising. Mm -hmm. Surprising, not so much. I mean, um, if a documentary of about 20 minutes cost nearly about, let us say, um, one, one lakh, fifty thousand or two lakhs, then the feature film of about one hour, it costs us about three and a half to four. Mm. So, they, we, that we are making in 16 millimeter. Right. And you know, actually, the documentary films now, the more expensive, you know, comes on the locations, because here you have to go on too many locations and all kinds. Mm -hmm. Here we go to a village, and it's in the village, our characters, so just a few locations are there. And the people in the region, they're not very expensive people. Mm -hmm. So, and the Rostock, which we are using, the format is 16 millimeter color. Mm -hmm. So there also we are saving on the Rostock. And uh, not too many actually locations all over the country, so distances. So there also we are saving. So that is why the cost is not, I mean it is somewhere between 3 to 4 lakhs of 
maximum, even for example, a 90 minutes film has cost me not more than five. Mm. Oh, that's very interesting. Mm. 16 millimeter has never really been an important medium here, has it? And it has not. But that is why, I mean, the, one of the one of the aims of starting these films is to develop 16 millimeter technology in this country. Because this is going to be, for all time to come, useful for television also. Okay, this is the format which is taken by the television people. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we have been, you know, because we have been mainly releasing our films in the theater, theater, cinema theaters. That is why our entire infrastructure was created for production of 35 millimeter films. But then, to, and it was possible to reduce from 35 to 16 with a good quality. Mm -hmm. But to blow up earlier, you know, from 16 to 35, it was not possible. The quality was... Now it is possible because with um, advanced technology in the laboratories also, printing technology, raw stock, um, better quality of raw stock, 16 millimeter film that we are shooting, we are actually able to blow them up also in 35 with quite good quality, oh, really? acceptable quality. Even in the feature film industry, some of the top filmmakers are uh, shooting their films in 16 millimeter and releasing them in the cinema theater after blowing up in 35 millimeter. In the West, people are even starting to shoot films on, on high quality, high definition video mm. and then uh, transferring it to 35 millimeter. So, uh, all well, things are happening. That is there, but um, do you think it is really being done on a commercial basis? Oh, it started, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it is, I think, very expensive. Yes. Prohibitively expensive. Well, if it becomes popular oh. enough, I guess then the prices will come down. Yeah. Well, that will be a really welcome I have an idea. Mm -hmm. If high density uh, video productions can be done, that will definitely be welcome any day. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at the moment, because of the prohibitive cost, mm -hmm. we are not in a position to think of it. that. Mm -hmm. And I'm told that the camera alone is very, very expensive, mm -hmm. very, very expensive. And um, the uh, last year I had been to um, Germany in that Photokina, mm -hmm. and there uh, the Japanese people were giving a demonstration of this high de definition uh, video program. Mm -hmm. And uh, from them actually I could learn that that was developing, you know, the research kind mm -hmm. of a thing they are still making and uh, promoting the idea. But they are still working on, because the camera is very bulky, very heavy camera, which is, uh, they, they said that this will not be popular. So they were experimenting on reducing the bulk of the camera, the weight wise and size wise and all that. Mm -hmm. And once they achieve that, maybe the cost may also come down comparatively. Then perhaps it may be a commercially, I would say, the viable kind of a thing. Well, we'll see. In our situation. We'll never know. <laughs> You've been a chief producer for two years now, right? Yeah, nearly about now. Soon I'll be completing three years now. Do you miss okay. being behind the camera doing your own Very much, very work? much. Very much, I keep on writing and drawing and collecting my ideas with hoping that I should get some time to really mm -hmm. do something in that. That of course, yes, I do, mm -hmm. very much. Okay, I think I've gone through all of my questions. Is there anything you would like to add? Um, mm, well, I mean, um, Again, in terms of uh, perhaps you would like to know about the uh, promotion of these mm -hmm. the films uh, nationally or internationally. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally believe that internationally also we, we could not actually promote our film uh, mm -hmm. the way we should have. 
I mean, my experience has been in um, meeting people from Western countries, or even there, when meeting people, um, whatever film they could see, uh, they were very much interested in seeing our material. I mean, I was, only a few years ago, I was in America, and I was shocked to to see that there was a tremendous communication gap mm -hmm. between us. Uh, they could not believe the kind of progress that this country has made. Mm -hmm. The kind of material that we have really, I mean, we have. I mean, when I told them that um, India is one of the three countries in the world as for the trained engineers and personnel are concerned, they could not believe it. When I told them India is one of the four or five space powers in the world, mm -hmm. India is one of the five or six atomic power in the world, mm -hmm. they could not believe it. Now who is responsible? We are responsible for that, for the communication gap. Mm -hmm. Because we have not been able to actually... And uh, what has happened that we, that is what I am trying to, you know, um, exert through the Ministry of External Affairs, through our Indian embassies abroad. And we want to actually strengthen the libraries in each embassy. And certain personnel to be trained in really, in the art of promoting mm -hmm. this film material to the people in those lands. And because, again, we have to be all the time in touch with the people. We have got to keep on telling people about the availability of them. And wherever they have seen, I mean, people like you very seldom come all the way here and then you are in a position to see and know, yes, what is happening here around and what we have done over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all right. There are problems. Problems are everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, do, I would not like to say that we have solved all our problems. We have because we have inherited some problems which are so difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, the population problem. Mm -hmm. Now, will you believe that only the population of Bombay is the total population of Australia? Mm -hmm. And size-wise, if you say Australia is double the size of India, mm -hmm. just imagine that kind of a situation we are. And so, in spite of all the achievements, all the development that actually is taking place in this country, is being nullified because of the overpopulation. That is one of our biggest problems. And uh, we are actually trying our level best, the medium. Um, we are trying to um, reach to the maximum audience in the best possible ma manner. But there are restraints, you know, because after all, restraints of all kinds, money-wise, mm -hmm. we cannot have the amount of um, investment required you know, to reach this kind of a population. For example, when you mentioned about the narration point. Now, family planning is a private affair. Mm -hmm. Family welfare is a very personal kind of a thing. And if the community-oriented thing comes, it cannot be personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, personal means where I identify myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, the filmmaker should not let me feel that it is a propaganda or is it anything. I mean, it should be on my life, my thinking, my experience of every moment, my relation with my people, my family members or my surrounding in the society. If I am really feeling that kind of a thing, it comes on the screen. Only then you can expect, yes, where have I gone wrong? What should we do? Why can't we do? All kinds of superstitions, all kinds of... Mm, wrong concept about uh, family planning methods, this and that. You know, because of the uh, illiteracy also. Mm -hmm. You know, there's... And one bad fish, you know, one bad publicity, like a bad fish in the pond can spoil the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That happens, so to counteract that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tremendous challenge to us. Mm -hmm. And if we really want to meet that kind of a challenge, we have to.
to have lot of resources, lot of effort has to go in. So, but that kind of an per, in perspective, people are not aware of our problem. Mm -hmm. There are certain things which really, and you know, misunderstandings. If you don't understand, there is a communication gap. Communication gap can create lots of problems. Mm -hmm. And that is where actually I think a uh, um, lot has to be done. Now, for example, Festival of India mm -hmm. in America or in France or in England or in the USSR and now we are going to uh, Japan all over. The idea is to really communicate with the people, let them have a, a real picture of this country mm -hmm. in every aspect, culture, our faiths, our art, our drawbacks, our achievements, everything should come out in proper perspective. Now we have made films, especially where we have brought out, for example, you might have seen that, um, did you see that uh, now folk paintings of India or folk music of India uh, or the youth of India and all these? The one I saw was um, on industrialization. And Achha, new dimensions or yeah. something like yeah. that. But even the rural scene and all these things, mm -hmm. we have made some very, very powerful films, mm -hmm. which really brings out the, the spirit from the soil of this country. Mm -hmm. Now, that kind of a thing, unless you understand, because this film, as people have said, and many West, Western people have said that this country is a very mysterious country. <laughs> But then there is a philosophy of this country mm -hmm. which uh, is the real pleasure of life, I would say. Which I, I many people from the Western countries, I mean, who have really realized and here they have really I mean, come out with some very, very um, outstanding work of literature some of the books written by them on certain purely Indian philosophy or Indian values. They are really outstanding books that they have done. Mm -hmm. But perhaps I would say that perhaps we may not have done that kind of a work. But some have, but they are very, very little. Some are a drop in this ocean. Which is, uh, well, it's, it's a step forward anyway. And, uh, but I'm so glad that you have uh, taken so much of interest and seen so many films as, mm -hmm. as you say, uh, said the other day that it was mind-boggling and <laughs> it is now. <laughs> well, I appreciate your being so available to me and mm -hmm. for helping me see all those films. I really am grateful to you and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're doing very important work. Awesome.